Hey guys and welcome to my account slash maxing tips and tricks video. Essentially what this video is, is a video summarizing the useful things for max cape or certain goals you want to strive for on your way to your max cape. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. Now the first thing I want to cover is an image I actually made for a video a very long time ago but never ended up making completely and that's why it's in this video. It's prioritizing as an average player. There are certain quests and stats you should go for as an average player before doing anything else, because if you focus on these first, it will benefit you faster than going for something else randomly. So the first quest goal to strive for is Plague's End, also known as Elf City once you complete it, because this is the elven quest that unlocks the Elf City. Now Elf City is essential for maxing or it's just very very useful in general, as you get access to high level skilling locations like Waterfall Fishing, which are still very good even with the deep sea fishing platform now available. The next useful quest is Sliske's Endgame, and I strive for this quest as it gives you a very useful item. Well, you can make the item with the free fragments that you get, the Catalyst Fragment, or the combined one. Essentially what the item is, is a combined version of the Hunters, Runecrafters and Farmers Catalyst Fragments. The Farmers one lets you pick dead herbs for experience, the Runecrafters one halves the degradation rate of the Runecrafting pouches, and the Hunters one lets you reset several Hunter Taps if they fail to catch any prey automatically. Apart from that, you get the Ring of Whispers, which gives you an invisible plus 3 bonus to all gathering skills, the Necklace of Shadows, and some other stuff which is useful and some great experience. The next quest is the Temple at Centistan, which of course unlocks Curses. Now, Curses like Soul Spit and Turmoil, if you did not know already, are extremely useful for PvM and Slayer. The next quest is the Light Within, which essentially unlocks the Seren Prayers like Superheat Form, Crystallize, and those are extremely useful as well. Apart from that, it also gives you experience lamps in agility, crafting, herb lore, prayer, slay, woodcutting, and divination. Now, the other useful quests are the Fate of the Gods, the World's Wakes, which unlocks some abilities, Ritual of the Majorat, and Lunar Diplomacy. Now, let's get onto the certain stats you want to strive for as an average player and why. In general, if you're a general normal player and you're going for Max Cape, I highly suggest you unlock Invention. Unlocking Invention requires level 80 crafting, smithing, and divination. It might sound quite hard to do, but it really isn't once you go for it. And once you unlock it, you get access to useful things like PVM and skilling perks. I'll be covering that in the useful things section, however. Now, if you want to be a PVMer, the stats you want to strive for are level 96 Herblore for Overload and other potions, and 96 Summoning for a Pack Yak, which can bank items better than the Pack Mammoth, in my opinion. And of course, at level 95 prayer, the curses, turmoil, anguish, and torment, which are extremely useful for bossing and slayer. Now, if you want to go for max, prioritize whatever you want to get ticked off first off your list. That could be a Bible skill on double experience weekend, that could be a Bible skill in general, it could be a boring skill like agility, or just a skill that you truly enjoy, maybe Slayer for example. If you really enjoy Slayer, just get that ticked off the list and then move on to other skills, or just keep Slaying to get that money for those buyables. Now that we covered some goals, let's get into the useful things when going for Max Cape. The first of the useful things when going for Max Cape are all the skilling outfits in-game, including the Elite versions. Now, most of these skilling outfits give you 1% bonus experience in the skill per piece that you own. Usually, there's 4 or 5 pieces per set depending on which one, and if you have all the pieces of the set, whether it be 4 or 5, you get 1% additional bonus experience in that skill as a set bonus. Now, apart from the experience bonus, which is nice, the skilling outfits actually do have way more, depending on which one, various other bonuses. It could be something like eating fish with the full shark outfit, that you don't get any fish in your inventory, which is extremely useful and makes fishing more AFK. Like, for example, the Infinity Ephraim outfit, which is essentially the elite version of the Runecrafters outfit. It's very different compared to, let's say, the Dungeoneering one, which just gives you way other bonuses and isn't really comparable at all. Now, most outfits can actually be obtained with Treasure Hunter or they are obtained through minigames. Now, some outfits can actually be made with the invention skill by gathering fragments. An example of this would be the Shark Outfit. Once you obtain enough Shark Fragments, you can actually create a Shark Outfit piece with the invention skill and you obtain these fragments after level 70 fishing. 
Another example of useful items would be the portables. Now recently the forge was removed with the mining and smithing rework, so don't worry about that one as it's no longer in the game. But of course, the other ones for the other skills are still in the game, and these give you a massive 10% experience boost, and for the range, which is the cooking one, it gives you 21% bonus experience. Now these are so good as a, well most of them, have a chance to save supplies when using them or create an extra supply while making something. As an example, you have a chance to make an extra potion when using a portable well, making potions. Now the cool thing about these is, you can actually win them from Treasure Hunter, or you can buy them, or you can get them from the Premier Club Vault, but you can also use other people's their portables, and usually they are hosted in World 84 at the Lumbridge Combat Academy, aka the Lumbridge Bank, near the Forge, which means you won't have to buy them yourself. The next useful items are the skilling dummies. Now these are extremely good experience for each of the skills you can obtain them from, or in. They can be worn of Treasure Hunter or bought of Vic the Trader when training in bonus experience for credits for around, I believe, 110 credits for the medium pack and 200 for a large skilling dummy crate. Now, there are four versions, the Slayer one, Thieving one, Agility and Hunter one. These are so good that if you use them double experience weekend as an example, the Slayer version can get you up to 2 mil Slayer experience per hour at level 99, which is insane. Now these are better to use at the higher levels, but if you want to use them at a lower level, let's say at level 1, one dummy will get you way, way up. It'll probably get you to like level 25, maybe 30-ish. At least I had a few on my alt account once and I did that and I just leveled up super fast. But it's better to save them at the higher levels as you're obviously going to be getting more experience per dummy. And you only, well, usually only have a limited amount of these unless you're buying keys on a dummy promotion. Now, like I said, at the goals you should strive for, the invention skill, which is unlocked by getting 80 smithing, crafting, and divination. Now, this skill has so many uses, and it's just a great skill overall. And like I said, this is a useful skill for comma and skilling. You can gain more total experience per hour by augmenting your weapons to one armor. This is good, and if you want max cap, you'll require level 99 invention anyways. The great thing is, you can train invention with your skills, like fire making, fishing, and woodcutting, but you can also train invention with combat. Now, invention gives you access to perks for your tools, weapons, and armor. Now, the great thing about these perks is they can increase your damage, they can increase your experience, your accuracy of bosses, they can increase the amount of resources that you obtain with gathering skills, and stuff like that. An example of this would be the furnace perk, which is good to to put on your augmented crystal hatchet or your augmented pickaxes it has a five percent chance per rank they are free ranks so 15 percent chance max of consuming a gathered resource for an extra 100 percent experience meaning that let's say you're mining that ore is consumed and you get 100 percent of that experience extra so two times the experience of the ore and it's consumed so you don't have to bank it or whatever so it's a very useful thing. Now there are so many invention perks in the game that I highly suggest you check out my invention perks guide if you want to learn more about invention perks. Now I mentioned this before, but quests are so, so helpful when going for max cape. Quests have so many benefits and can give you huge amounts of experience if you're just a new account starting off. If you're an Iron Man watching this video, quests are literally essential for you to get some items. The quests give you treasure hunter keys for one. These treasure hunter keys translate into skilling dummies, bonus experience or experience lamps, or maybe even something cool or the 200 mil coins rare reward. It could be anything. Quests also give you big experience rewards, like I said. Some quests give you massive 100k experience lamps for skills. Usually you do require a certain level in a skill to use that lamp on that skill, but nonetheless, very good experience. Quests also give you access to useful skilling items or prayers like the combined catalyst fragment like mentioned earlier or the Seren prayers. They also give you access to unique slayer monsters which is good and sometimes bosses like the corporal beast for example which does require a quest. And the most important thing, by obtaining quest points you can get more dice from the quest points reward shop. Now you may be wondering what the hell is the quest point shop? Why is it good? Why are these dice good? Well, these dice are literally clue score rewards, and you can literally get dice from the higher tier ones. Meaning you can make a lot of money by just, you know, going to the quest point reward shop and claiming your rewards. If you're wondering, you can find the quest point shop in Farrok, very close to the lodestone. 
Next up, we have D&Ds, also known as Distractions and Diversions. Now, you have daily, weekly, and monthly D&Ds. D&Ds are usually very good experience per hour. Now, what do I mean by very good experience per hour? Because you can usually do them in 5 to 10 or 15 minutes. But the thing is, for the time you're doing these D&Ds, you're getting a whopping amount of experience. Meaning that the experience per hour, if you would calculate it into an hour or just, you know, multiply it, whatever. If it's 15 minutes times 4, you know, stuff like that. The experience per hour is just so much higher than training skills manually. And that's why D&Ds are always worth doing. Now you can actually reset some D&Ds using a reset token for the daily, weekly or monthly versions and do them a second time in a day. Now the best D&Ds, I actually made a top 5 video, are the Sinkholes, Warbands, Caches, Troll Invasion, which is a monthly by the way, and Familiarization for Triple Charms. Next up we have mini games. Now mini games can get you useful items for training up your stats. Even if it's just combat stats or PVM even, you can get yourself a good cape by doing the fight kiln, for example. And mini games can also net you a lot of bonus experience in a skill. The best mini games for this would be Stealing Creation, Barbarian Assault, Pest Control, and Cabbage Face Plants Bonanza. Now the thing is, mini games are usually dead in RuneScape 3 unless there's a spotlight and you're in an active world, or you're doing it with a clan or a certain French chat. Now, I'm sure there's people that are going to comment down below which franchise are active, and I'm going to thank you guys in advance for that. Now, one of my favorite minigames personally is the Fight Kiln, because it's a combat minigame. It's very fun. It's essentially just a bunch of waves of monsters and a final boss. You do require good gear and high combat stats, but once you do complete it successfully, you will get one of the best capes in the game, the Kiln Cape, which you have a ranged magic and melee version of. Next up, in terms of useful things, are auras. Now, there's a bunch of auras in game. There's just literally so many different ones, even some stupid ones that are literally just kind of a joke. Um, but essentially, skilling auras are extremely useful if you're going for max cape. They do cost a lot of loyalty points, and if you enjoy PVM, you're better off using the PVM auras first or buying them first as you're just going to be wasting your loyalty points. But if you do have some spare, it might be worth buying them to increase your experience power. The Jack of Trades Aura is also a very good one to get you a daily big chunk of experience each day, which you can put in these slower skills or skills you don't like, like for example, Agility. Now of course, another one that's useful but pretty costly is the Wisdom Aura, which gives you a 2.5% bonus experience in any skill you do, whether they be combat, skills, it doesn't matter, 2.5% bonus experience in any skill of your wishing. And of course, I have to mention the PVM auras like Manacle, Reckless, Runic Accuracy and stuff. They're all very useful for PVM and they can help you make more money per hour depending on what boss you're doing. And finally, I want to talk about one of the most important things when going for max if you truly care about experience. It's being efficient. Being efficient with your time is actually really good and smart to do. Now, one of my tips is to train multiple skills at once at whatever opportunity you do have. Now, the most basic example of this would be using a bone crusher or something like herbicide, aka drop cleaner that gives you experience, while doing any combat like Slayer. It won't be much experience, but it's still efficient as you're training more skills at once. Another great example would be if you're waiting on something in game, let's say an engineering party or before your sinkholes or just before warbands if you're just chilling at the wilderness ditch, do something to gain experience when waiting. An example of this would be fletching broad arrows when you're waiting. You know, just a simple thing. Even though broad arrows are expensive, you know, do something you can have stackable in your inventory for a long time. Maybe disassemble some logs for invention components. I don't know, something like that. Now, if you have money, you want to be using items like Silverhawks because it's literally, again, the same as point one, training multiple skills at a time, which is super efficient. Now, Silverhawks are very expensive, and I only suggest you really use them on Double Experience Weekend unless you have literally just pockets full of money in RuneScape 3. Another important one is the farming skill, which is very AFK if you think about it. But just don't forget to check your player and farm animals every now and then and plant trees during your playtime every time the, you know, they're full grown. You know, grab them, get them over, get them done with and plant them again to be super efficient. You can even set a timer if you wish to, but that's just a bit, you know, too much in my opinion. But you could do that. And the most important point in this video, it's training expensive skills, aka buyables, on Double Experience Weekend. 
because this is going to save you so much money and time if you're doing something like summoning. It's just incredible as the best thing you can do to be efficient. You can save so much money, I swear. You can literally train a skill for half the price and stuff like summoning for every hour that you do on Double Experience Weekend, you're going to be saving 12 hours of your life, grinding charms if you're doing the traveling method, which is like 3 to 9k charms per hour in terms of losses. So, you know, whatever. It's super good to do. Anyways, if you're interested in a Double Experience Weekend preparation guide, I'll leave one in the description below. As a Double Experience Weekend is kind of around the corner, end February 22 to the 25th, I believe. It's a double experience weekend and it's not too far away. So if you want to prepare, check out that video as I give you guys a lot of information there. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below and maybe if you consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. When you're feeling down on your luck, you're tired and stuck, enough is enough. You gotta pick yourself up, cause life gets hard, it might leave scars.